So, in this video, we're going to look at doing a binary logistic model using SPSS. The binary logistic model is part of the generalized linear model, and it's the one you use when you have data that's binary. It's in nominal categories with two alternatives, like male, female, yes or no. We're going to go through the instructions in chapter 13 of the textbook <clears throat> and we're going to use the data on urban birds, which is the example data in that chapter. Here's a copy of the data file. You can make this data file yourself and there's separate help on how to enter data into SPSS or you can download the pre-prepared data file from the online resource centre. There's more information on this data set in the, in the textbook. Just briefly, in this first column you've got the site that the birds the data were collected on the birds was collected, the date at which the eggs were laid relative to the 1st of April, um, and here you have the measure of reproductive success as whether the nest fledged or not. So this is a binary variable, uh, fledged or not. Counts, this is another way of measuring reproductive success, but we're not going to deal with it in this video. That's in another video on the log linear model. So we have two independent variables or explanatory variables as we generally call them in the context of the generalized linear model and one uh, dependent or response variable as we call it in, the, in this context. Our model, our word model is bin fledge binary equals site plus, fled plus fledge date where site is categorical and egg date is continuous. I think we're ready to crack on with the analysis so to do a binary logistic model on these data Go to Analyze, Generalized Linear Model, Generalized Linear Models. And you'll notice you've got these nine tabs across the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're going to look at six of those. You can explore the rest another time. We're going to look at just the basics. So the type of model we're going to be using is uh, a binary logistic. Actually, you'll, when you see it, it will be reset like that, and you'll have to choose one. So the default is linear scale linear and you need to choose binary logistic. Under response you want to put your response variable or uh, dependent variable here and we're using the remember this is for binary data, our fledge binary logistic model for binary data. We want to stick it in there so we select it and press the arrow. Predictor variables, those are our independent variables. Um, for, uh, site is categorical or a factor. Egg date is continuous which is called a covariate. The model, under model, we want main effects, which we've got there, and we just want to select these two variables as our main effects. Uh, under statistics, we're not going to worry about estimation in this, this example. We're going to go to statistics, check we've got type 3. Uh, we're going to use a default statistic, the ward statistic, and we're going to choose all the other um, defaults. The only extra one we're going to choose is the include experimental parameters. This will give us that odds ratio in our output. So just these are the these are already selected for us and that's good. We want those. We want our model goodness of fit test to tell us how good our model is. We want to model summary statistics to tell us if it's significant, and we will need our parameter estimates to tell us how good the model uh, or tell us what the model is. So what the model is, if it's significant, and how good is it? And here we have our effect size measured as odds ratios. Let's look at save. We're not going to do anything here. Just have a look around and see what that could do. You could, for example, save your predicted value of the response variable uh, in the data file. OK, we're ready to go, so press OK. You've got the model information up here, and then information on the number of amount of data, basic descriptive statistics on your categorical variable and your um, variables and your continuous variable. Then we come to the goodness of fit here. This is particularly um, we're interested in the AIC value that will tell us how good the model is and also uh, we can look at the deviance ratio here to give us an idea of if to check for over dispersion which is a key assumption of this test. Then you've got your uh, model summary statistics here to tell you how good, good, good the model is. To, sorry, to tell you if the model is significant or not when the individual variables are contributing to a significant amount of the variables. And here you've got the information that will give you the uh, parameter estimates which will tell you what the model is. Uh, the more detail in the chapter, but that's the basics. That's it.